Hello and welcome to the KPI Institute's webinar, A Balanced Scorecard System Approach in the Healthcare Sector. My name is Andre Costa and I will be a host for today along with our presenter, Andrea Minelli. This webinar is part of a series of free educational materials that aim to enhance the knowledge and know-how of those interested, while also creating a bridge between us as a company and you, our public. The KPI Institute is a research organization specialized in business performance. It operates research programs in 12 practice domains, each linked to a certification course, ranging from strategy and KPIs to employee performance and from customer service to innovation performance. The KPI Institute continuously builds on its values of best know-how, data and facts and common sense to achieve its mission of integrating performance as a discipline through research, publications, and what interests us today through educational programs such as this webinar. Today, 13 years after the KPI Institute was created, we can proudly say that our products have reached professionals in five continents and that our public comprises a worldwide community of 73,000 members online and 28,000 registered companies on smartkpis.com. Today's webinar will reveal and analyze real case scenarios of implementing a performance management system within a hospital, starting from the selection of the key performance indicators. And it will be delivered by Andrea Minelli, a business research analyst at the KPI Institute. He is a certified benchmarking professional and certified KPI professional. His research activity in the performance management field resulted in the documentation of over 500 key performance indicators examples. Andrea's undertaking in the field of performance management and improvement also consists of writing research-based art articles. As a business analyst, Andrea has participated in the development of the Utilities Benchmarking Report series covering three major utilities, water, gas, and electricity. This presentation lasts between 30 to 45 minutes Please feel free to ask any questions you might have during the webinar as they will be answered at the end of the presentation in our Q&A session. Enjoy the KPI Institute's webinar, A Balanced Scorecard System Approach in the Healthcare Sector. Now I would like to invite Andrea to begin his presentation. Good morning or good afternoon everyone according to your time zone and thank you Andre for your introduction and welcome to today's webinar. Well, as you have heard from Andre's presentation, uh, today's webinar is going to be dedicated into a description of how healthcare organizations or healthcare facilities can implement a performance management system that is based on the balanced scorecard approach. As you may know, to be able to manage and take tactical decisions about our performance, we need to be able to measure it and we need to use specific performance tools that will allow us to keep track of our performance and then take corrective actions aiming at improving our current state. Uh, in terms of performance measurement into the healthcare sector, it may be to be a relatively recent phenomena. However, the first approaches to measuring performance in this sector go as back as the beginning of the 19th century. And we will explain together how and what are the main milestones that are associated with measuring performance in this sector. In terms of today's agenda, today we're going to start today's webinar with a description of the measurement techniques in the healthcare sector and why do we measure healthcare, and as well as what kind of tools we can use to measure and monitor our performance through time. A, such a performance manager system will be implemented and based on the balanced scorecard. So we're going to describe what this balanced scorecard is. And as a final note, we will go through some real life scenarios, some practical knowledge that you will gain in seeing real cases of uh, implementations of a performance manager system into a healthcare sector. So in terms of um, learning on points for the webinar. First of all, we're going to understand how we can develop, we can manage our KPIs for healthcare. So how we can understand performance measurement in this sector based on the uh, balanced scorecard approach. So we will understand the main four perspective of such a tool and we will describe them one by one to see their relevancy and how useful they can be in monitoring performance. So we will apply it within a healthcare facility and see what are the implications of these implementations. And last but not least, we are going to see some real case scenarios 
of uh, real life practices. So let's get started. So basically, let's have a, an overview of the main milestones that are associated with uh, performance measurement. Here you can see uh, what basically a timeline of the main milestones that are associated with uh, performance measurement. So it all started as back as the end of the 19th century with Florence Nightingale. She was the pioneer in developing a state-of-the-art data collection method on sanitary conditions in hospital in the UK. And it related the conditions of the hospital with in-hospital mortality. So this can be considered one of the first attempts in collecting data to assess outcome and health healthcare outcome to patients. Uh, around the beginning of the 20th century, though, we have to mention Dr. Coleman's intervention with his framework called End Result Framework. He was the first pioneer, though, in the development of a national program. This national program was basically creating a database of data that kept track of mortality and morbidity of surgery operations in, in the United States, in Boston, and this uh, during the beginning of the 20th century. And on the wave of Dr. Coleman's uh, intervention, though, and throughout all the way of the 20th century, a lot of different standards, quality standards, and specific concepts like quality improvement, patient safety, have emerged and have evolved, culminating with Dr. Helwood's uh, contribution in 1988 when he published the Outcome Management, which was a national database that included different typologies of standards and categories from pain management to outcome variable. So this was the real first creations of a performance management system in the sector. Not to mention though, in the last 25 years or so, the creations of standards like NCAK or GCHO. So these are huge, widely internationally recognized standards that developed an extensive set of performance measures that help organizations um, perform better as well as monitoring the performance through time. So uh, as a rule of thumb though, why uh, can uh, organizations, healthcare organizations need to monitor their performance and what are the targets that are associated with it? As you may know, um, the ultimate goal of a healthcare facility is to provide quality of care to the patients. However, it's not just a matter of delivering care. There are so many different intermediate measures that needs to be, of course, measured in terms of medical processes, health outcome. And here you can see many different categories that are associated with targets and performance, starting from medical diagnosis, treatment, ambulatory care, clinical effectiveness. So it's not just a matter of delivering and seeing the end result over the patient's health, but it's also all the steps that have to be taken while and when delivering care. So these are just a few of the categories that are associated with such uh, a measurement system. But eventually, the most important question is why do we measure performance? What is the main reason for such an action, for such an activity? So first of all is quality improvement. In the last decades or so, healthcare facilities have been facing with huge and strong pressure in both on a financial perspective as well as in respect to compliance with standards, with quality standards. So quality improvement and transparency when delivering care are all great motivations for why measurement of performance needs to take place. As well as, as we were saying here in the third bullet point, is the idea of being certified, of receiving accreditations and licenses for compliance with high quality standards that are set internationally. Not to mention the idea that nowadays, the recognition of having and delivering a patient-centered medical, medical health care procedure is crucial, is key, given that um, patients are able and have the possibility of choosing, of actually understanding and seeing how a specific health care provider is performing, how the care is delivered. So the concept of patient center is all focused on the experience of the patient, how the patient is going to experience the overall duration of his or her duration at the hospital when receiving care. 
In terms of performance measurement tools, so let's have a, a quick poll. I really would like to have your insights. I really would like to interact with the audience with you. And I'm gonna ask you this very uh, simple question. I'm gonna ask Andre to launch the poll in a few seconds. You will have a minute. And the question is if you are familiar with the concept of the balanced scorecard framework. So uh, feel free, you will have a minute to answer and we will come on it together in a few seconds. So you can launch the poll, Andre. I'm actually, while you answer, I'm actually very curious to see um, how many of you are in uh, are aware of this concept of the balance scorecard framework. And let's see the results that will be published soon. So 50% uh, of you said reply A, yes. And 38 of you said to a moderate extent. Well, for those who replied yes, I think this is gonna be a good learning opportunity to maybe uh, having a general uh, understanding of more specifics that are associated with this concept. So uh, I think it's gonna be a good learning opportunity for everyone, especially also for those who answer to a moderate extent or even no. So we are gonna dedicate some time in explaining what this tool is all about. And uh, thank you for your uh, interaction. So basically, um, the uh, Balance Scorecard is a very well-known tool. Uh, we actually recently conducted a survey, the KPI Institute has conducted a survey in actually asking to its community members whether the uh, Balance Scorecard is a tool that are in use within their corporation, within their organizations. And basically more than 40% said that they are actually using it. So the Balance Scorecard is considered to be the top um, management, performance management tool in use. And this is in compliance with another survey that was conducted by Bain & Company a few years back. And uh, they actually surveyed among a huge sample of people, a huge sample of organizations. And they say out of this survey that 40% of the people are actually using it and they are very satisfied, like four out of five. So it's already a quite good result. And so uh, why? I'm gonna to explain together why such a tool is so successful, why such a tool is so widespread use and why should we use it within an hospital in a healthcare facility. Before doing so though, I really would like to interact with you again. And in the first question, I asked you if you were familiar with the concept. Now I'm asking you if you have implemented a performance management system based on the balance scorecard or if you're using it right now within your organization. So Andrea, you can also launch this second poll when you can. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see um, your answers. Please, one minute, thank you. I see that you're answering as we speak. Andrea, are these the final results? Not yet, only 89% oh. voted. We can wait a few more seconds. Okay. Let's see, they're coming up soon. Perfect, so the poll results says the following. 38% of you says that they are actually uh, implementing, they have been implementing a performance management system using a balanced scorecard approach, or they are actually using a balanced scorecard, followed by 25% that we intend to implement one, and 38% that says no, that they are not having implemented. So I think this is gonna be a good learning point for everyone, and especially for those who replied no, to be uh, actually more convinced and seeing the potential benefits when utilizing a, um, a balanced scorecard and when incrementing a performance management system based on this tool. So let's get into this. Let's get into the better understanding of this concept, the balanced scorecard. 
briefly describe the history. How did it come up? Where does it come from? So as you may know, David Norton and Robert Copeland, they have introduced this concept in one of their Harvard Business Review articles. This article was basically referring to how companies and need to be able to measure the performance of those intangible assets. And in order to manage the performance of those assets, you need to create a way, a tool to actually measure it and take corrective decisions. And so this was the first attempt back in 1992. Throughout the years and after the publication of that famous article, thousands and thousands of companies, no matter the size, no matter the industry, decided to implement a tool, this performance measurement tool. And it became throughout the years a much more complicated and overall and more complex tool that transformed itself into a sort of architecture. And we will see how this transition occurred from a mere performance measurement tool to a, a overall uh, architecture. How does it look like? This could be considered a standard um, um, structure of a balanced scorecard. We have for perspective, in this case, we have uh, learning and growth, so referring to our people, the internal processes, the customer, and the financials. So this is a typical structure. This doesn't mean that you will not find other topologies of perspective, because this will depend, of course, on the context, on what the industry is doing. If it is, a, for instance, a non-for-profit healthcare organization, we may have non-for-profit hospitals. So the financial perspective might not be as relevant. So we can insert other uh, perspective like risk management, for instance, if the activities are associated with some sort of risks or basically, uh, I don't know, um, for instance, organizational results. So the key point here is to develop and use dimensions and perspective that perfectly reflect the strategy of the company. So this can, of course, this perspective can change. I would like to gain a little bit more of insights though, explaining it, the four standard perspective one by one. So the financial, as you may know, it refers to the overall financial health, the financial sustainability of a company. And uh, usually within each single perspective on a balanced scorecard, you can have associated one to two strategic objectives. Like in this particular case, for instance, we have increased profitability or maintained financial discipline with the associated key performance indicators. However, according to the typology of the uh, healthcare uh, company, you may have different strategic objectives and, of course, different KPIs. Another example could be, like, as a, as a strategic objective, it could be optimize cost structure, for instance. So overall, the financial perspective is, as you may know, associated with the overall financial stability of the organizations. What about the customer? So in this case, what about our patients? It's about how the medical care delivers quality standards, deliver quality care to its patient, to its customers. And so here as well, we may have strategic objectives like maintain high level of customer satisfaction or deliver high quality of care standards. So these um, strategic objectives, of course, will change in accordance to the uh, typology of healthcare facility we are dealing with. But these are generally strategic objectives that can be inserted in uh, this perspective. In terms of internal business processes, so when it comes to internal, it refers to all the medical procedures that occur when delivering care. So here we have as potential strategic objectives like achieve superior service delivery or continuously improve internal capabilities. I may add, for instance, provide effective emergency services or optimize inpatient flow or improve appointments management. So these can actually, we have kind of freedom of choice in trying to uh, uh, align and customize this perspective, these strategic objectives in relation to what we do. And last but not least, our people, our medical staff, our employees. And it's here that we need to have to uh, support and invest. And usually even within this perspective, we may have different strategic objectives like working environment, related to working environment, engagement of the employees, supporting continuous professional development or ensure medical staff availability. So it's, this is where really we need to focus on uh, our employees that are the ultimate tool in order to deliver high quality standards of care. So overall, 
trying to summarize the role of this tool. The Binance Scorecard provides a standardized overview of progressing towards our strategic objectives. So it uh, shows us in details how we can uh, measure and progress towards our strategic objectives through uh, clarifications of aligning the organizational levels, uh, fostering communications among all those involved within the healthcare uh, facility, clarifying the strategy and creating a sort of common direction towards the achievement of our objectives, of our strategic objectives, of course. So as I was saying before, the Banner Scorecard kind of evolved from a mere performance measurement tool to an overall architecture. And uh, I would like to explain you here why, what are the value added that are associated with such a system. So first of all, a Banner Scorecard architecture provides and delivers clarity because we can analyze clear numbers, clear strategic objectives, and we can actually measure the progress and assess how we are performing. By having this clarity, we are also delivering and having focus because we are going to look at the specific KPIs, at our specific performance, and focus on really or what really matters to our strategy and to our objectives. As well as improvement, simply because I can see my current result, I can see my desired state of performance that we want to achieve in the future, and we can take corrective action out of it. And this ensures not only clarity, focus, and improvement, but also engagement. Because when KPIs are associated with achievable goals, it will enable a sort of sense of engagement and accountability to all the members, to all the employees, as well as a learning experience for everyone and in fostering the communication because we can see actual results, corrective actions, and outcomes of these actions. So it's a very learning experience for everyone. And these, again, are the main points that I wanted to discuss with you. This is how the structure looks like. This is how the balance scorecard structure is composed. It starts from the idea of having a general current state and having a desired state of evolution. So where do we want to be in the future? So through a strategy map, we can translate our strategy into actionable objectives and that is where we're going to have the scorecard and the dashboard because we're going to associate kpis to these uh, strategic objectives that we need to achieve and we will describe together how these two tools the dashboard and the scorecard are so relevant in the structure however we do not only have a general uh, overview of uh, a corporate strategy but we need also to be able to cascade our strategy, our KPIs, our um, general strategic objectives, not only at the corporate level, but also cascaded down through the department and eventually, ultimately, to our employees. So um, we need to be able to cascade it to individual and employee level to in order to make sure that the strategic objectives that are associated with each single employee, which each single clinical unit is in compliance, is aligned with the overall view and corporate view of our healthcare facility. And this is a process that takes time, but it's definitely a worthwhile process that will ensure alignment and actual performance improvement because we are able to monitor our performance throughout all the layers of the organizations. And this is what I was talking about, being able to cascade it from organizational level, so top to bottom, through departments, to teams, to clinical units, and eventually to our employees. How does a, a performance scorecard look like, though? So these are uh, the general uh, structure. How does it look like? We have generally four to five perspectives, as I was said before. Within each perspective, we will have strategic objectives that can vary in accordance to the topology of the services, to the topology if it is a non-for-profit or a profitable organization, in this case, a healthcare organization. What's very important in this tool is the idea that we are going to have some measurable um, key performance indicators, something we can keep track of, something we can measure through time. And something and information that is specific because we are going to create an overall library of key performance indicators that are going to be clustered in specific 
or dimensions that the healthcare facility, that top management, that the performance management responsibles have decided. So again, it's a measurable unit, it's specific, as well as time related, because we need to be able to know when to measure it, when to report it. Is it gonna be on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, on a biannual basis? So this is something that we need to take care of. As well as, and most importantly, we have to have KPIs that are associated with an attainable objective, and it has to be realistic in order to ensure the engagement of our employees when delivering, when performing, and ensuring that we are able to measure our performance and actually take corrective actions. So this is basically what a scorecard looks like. It's a very structured view of how we can monitor performance through time. However, we may also use a dashboard. What is the, a dashboard is another tool that provides and delivers a more operational structure overview that is divided into clusters, into processes. There are no objectives in a dashboard. There are more clusters of processes. So it provides a more visual approach, a visual representation of our performance in accordance with our strategic objectives. And here you can see, I just to, I wanted to uh, make it more clear for you to see, we have, for instance, appointment pipeline or missed service opportunities with related KPIs for a specific healthcare provider. And here follows another uh, typologies of uh, category. So service delivery or workload and productivity with the associated KPIs. So, uh, the dashboard and a scorecard are two well-defined and different tools that we need to be able to use. And here how it looks like overall. It's a more visual representation of operational side. But let's try to make it one against, let's say, try to compare between the two. Why? Because these two concepts can cause confusion they can cause confusion among business professions because they can be used and seen as, you know, they can be used interchangeably, they can use and be named simultaneously, but there are quite a few specific distinctions. So in order to differentiate between these two performance management tools, it is important to understand what typologies of KPIs do we insert in a dashboard and what typologies of KPI do we insert in a scorecard. So in, within the scorecard, we're going to have a structured high-level view of KPIs that are going to be structured and clustered in perspectives, as you may know. These four perspectives, people, learning, and growth, internal processes, customers, and financials, can be considered to be the normal um, perspectives that are used. However, as I said a few minutes ago, we might have also different perspectives, like risk management or more related to healthcare outcome. So this can absolutely change. But the key point here is that the scorecard, we utilize it and we have a look at the progress towards our uh, objectives. Meanwhile, for a dashboard, it's more operational. So in this particular example for a healthcare facility, we may look at service delivery, workload and productivity resource utilization or appointment pipeline. These are more operational side with related KPIs. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you're not gonna make a difference between the two based, for instance, on how frequent you measure it. Because usually a dashboard can be actually be a real-time dashboard. Meanwhile, a scorecard can be actually monitored on a monthly basis, for instance. But the difference between the two tools is on how and we measure, how we do we monitor it, but above all, what kind of KPIs, what kind of key performance indicators we insert in each of the two tools. This is just an example of an implementation of a performance management system with scorecard and dashboards that can be cascaded to each single clinical unit. And in each dashboard or scorecard, you will have different KPIs and different strategic objectives. As a final, comment on this webinar, I really would like to gain some insights about real life practices. And this I think is gonna be very interesting for the audience and for, for everyone as a learning opportunity. So I'm going to describe two different case studies 
of healthcare facilities that have implemented a performance management system. The first one is about the standardization of selecting the KPIs. The second case study is going to be involved with a more quality improvement initiative. Let's describe them one by one and let's get go through it. So the first case study is about King Faisal Specialty Hospital. This is a hospital that operates and is based in Saudi Arabia and it is considered to be one of the national um, referral center for oncology and organ transplantation in the region. What was the objective of uh, the hospital was to standardize, to come up with a proper implementation of a performance management system in order to support, truly support decision making and having strategic objectives that were at both operational, at strategic and at tactical level and selecting KPI that were relevant to them. How did they try to implement such a system? Well, they have actually implemented uh, a sort of and conducting of 40 semi-structured interviews. These interviews were conducted with top management officers as well as head of official departments and clinical units, as well as performance professionals. So uh, the idea with this um, implementation was to be able to select those KPIs that were relevant for them and that actually reflect their current status of performance. What kind of level of performance were associated within the hospital were at both operational, tactical and strategic level. What was the particularity of such an implementation though was that they have based this implementation on the Donabedian model. This model provides a framework for evaluating healthcare services and quality of care through a system of performance management measures. So these measures were kind of clustered into three main areas, structure measure, healthcare medical processes and healthcare outcomes. And so they have tried to base the selection of these KPIs on the Donabedian model. So what, what did they come up with? So after the conduction of these interviews and research conducted by the top management of the hospital, they've come up with um, four, 58 KPIs. These 58 KPIs could have been identified and standardized and have been validated against the published research as well as international standards. They have been put in comparison with international standards. And these 58 KPIs have not been chosen just for the sake of being measured. They have been chosen simply because they belong to specific categories, specific clusters that are relevant in nowadays environment for the healthcare. And these, among the main categories, we had access to care, which is crucial. Uh, utilization of emergency rooms and operating rooms, the safety of the patients, as well as infection control. So as you can see, and this goes back to the beginning of my webinar, we were discussing about the idea of creating a patient-centered service. So focus on the experience, starting from when accessing the healthcare facility up to the post-medical um, services that have been received and of course the overall satisfaction. To be on a more practical side, these are the main categories uh, the 58 KPIs chosen belong to and we have as I was saying access to care, utilization, so more a process oriented as well as the satisfaction of the patients and for instance infection control. This can be considered to be the hot area, the top priorities in the performance management in healthcare nowadays. So starting from accessing the healthcare, the procedure within the facility and the post effects of the procedure received. Just to come up with some examples here, these are examples of KPIs that were included into the uh, management, the performance management system, starting from number of patients referred, to bloodstream infection, percentage of bloodstream infection, as well as generic utilization indicators. So it provides an overall view of how it's not just a matter of delivering care. It's not just a matter of having and delivering qualitative uh, services to our patients, but it's about the overall uh, needed steps that needs to be taken when 
providing care to uh, our um, public. Overall, with this implementation, the idea in mind is the fact that the chosen KPIs were monitored for a specific objective, which was the implementation of a performance manager system with KPIs that were really relevant for them in order to highlight where were the potential deficiencies, what could have been the areas where performance improvement action could have been taken. And where, when implementing a performance management system, being able to involve not only those who are implementing the system, but also all the employees, the front runners, those that are involved primarily in delivering care on a day-to-day -day basis. So involvement in the selection of the KPIs, in receiving suggestions and ideas on how to improve the performance at both medical perspective as well as an administrative one and associate triggers, associate values that KPIs needs to respect it to be in compliance with and ensure that this system is not only cascaded throughout our clinical units, but that ensures and foster interdepartmental communication in order to ensure that all the persons involved with such implementations, with KPIs, given that each single person will be uh, defined and associated with a specific KPI that are on board to foster the buy-in process. This was the first case study. So involved into the selection and the implementation and the culture, the insertion of a performance culture in the hospital. The second case study is slightly different because we actually refer to uh, quality improvement initiatives. So let's describe it in a little bit more details. So uh, the case study is called Door to Balloon Time Project Case Study. Um, cardiovascular diseases are considered to be one of the leading causes of death in the UA region. So there is a specific KPI, which is the door to balloon time, less than 90 minutes, which is widely recognized and it is actually monitored by well-recognized international healthcare organizations and standards, starting from Joint Commission, as well as American College of Cardiology, or even the American Heart Association. So the problem associated with this case study was to ensure a higher compliance with these key performance indicators, ensuring the balloon inflation, the door to balloon time to be less than 90 minutes in association with STMI patients that are actually in very critical conditions. How did they manage to implement and ensure higher compliance with the implementation of a Lean Six Sigma methodology? Why was this methodology chosen? Simply because when monitoring and assessing the current state of performance, waste generation, limited resources, and significant variation in the processes have been noticed. That's why Lean Six Sigma was chosen as the uh, methodology in order to ensure quality improvement. But how did it happen? How did they implement such a Lean Six Sigma methodology? First of all, I have to say that this was a multidisciplinary approach where all the members of the cardiac ambulatory, and not only that, were involved in such a quality improvement initiatives. In this case, STMI care processes have been delineated. The problem in this, this case was the fact that the roles have not been identified and delineated enough. So there was general confusion on how the steps needed to be taken. When there is uncertainty in these specific situations though, a lot of time was wasted. It's very specific and very precious time when considering that we are taking care of STMI patients that are in critical uh, conditions. So the idea and the action that were taken, so first of all, is that they have allocated time goals associated with each single step of the way in the process of delivering and handling these typologies of patients, as well as changing the medical processes that have been altered and involving and ensuring training of cardiac catheterization team. So it was a general approach by the top management in involving uh, the medical staff involved in this medical unit in ensuring that the process was streamlined as much as possible. So having said that, the idea is that um, um, 
the healthcare facility was trying to streamline the process of the D2B process, the door to balloon. And in order to ensure such a compliance with the less than 90 minutes, they had to streamline and take corrective actions. But what kind of corrective actions were taken? So first of all, the idea is that they have actually assessed the current state of performance and they have involved frontliners and all the stakeholders into assessing what was wrong and what were the points where corrective quality improvement action could have been taken. So they've, that's why they have chosen these key performance indicators. These key performance indicators ensure to be a internationally recognized KPI where not only we had the support of frontliners, but we are also the support of our stakeholders. And the implementations of such a lean methodology ensured that interdepartmental communication was clarified, that the roles, the specific roles, starting from the medical staff to the nurses to the surgeons were delineated. This corrective action, this path of improvement actually resulted in the long term in having percentage of patients meeting the 90 minute window to increase from 58% to 98%. And this was ensured thanks to the implementation of such a methodology as well as fostering interdepartmental communication. So what are the main learning points from these two case studies? In the first case study, it was the idea of setting up performance management culture, selecting KPIs that were relevant for King Faisal Hospital and that were relevant for their activities and in association with the specific categories of care that are very relevant nowadays, which are the access to care, patient flow, the procedure, the medical procedure, the infection control, and the overall satisfaction. In order to ensure that performance is measured and that corrective actions can be taken and that all the layers of the organizations are in compliance. They have a common view when monitoring the performance in association with their strategic objectives. In the second case, it's the perfect example of when we have a current state of performance analysis. We monitor a KPI that is internationally recognized. We receive the support and we involve in training activities, not only our current stakeholders, but also frontliners when delivering care, as well as ensuring that through the training, medical staff has a positive experience that will definitely then translate into having an improvement in delivering care and an improvement in communication among departments that will eventually result in a quality improvement. So these are, I think, the, most, the key learning points in association with these uh, case studies. Summarizing, the idea with this webinar today was the fact that we need to be able, as a healthcare facility, as a healthcare organization, we need to be able to manage and develop KPIs in association with specific categories that are relevant to us. How can we insert, how can we implement such a system utilizing a balanced scorecard. This balanced scorecard is a very structured view, a very structured approach to measuring performance in association with specific perspective and clusters that we will use, that the healthcare facility will implement in accordance to what they deliver. And to conclude, in as a matter of the case studies, the idea is that nowadays KPIs needs to be clustered in specific categories that are relevant to the healthcare facility overall. And for the lean management application is the idea that uh, it's not only a matter of assessing and taking corrective action. It is a matter of fostering a performance management culture that is gonna be cascaded throughout the layers of the organization that will foster, first of all, communication, and then will eventually lead to performance quality improvement. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm here um, ready to answer any question you might have. Andre? As of right now, there seem to be no questions, but if anyone has any query whatsoever, we kindly invite you to ask them away. 
Perfect. Thank you. Well, I meanwhile that we are waiting for, in case we receive some questions, I wanted to involve you with the um, a very important uh, initiatives that the KPI Institute has launched recently. I've been primarily involved with the launch of our Healthcare Performance Lab, and it's going to be a, a lab that is going to be dedicated into delivering of training courses as well as providing advisory services to healthcare institutions that need and will provide support when measuring their performance, taking corrective actions with the performance and eventually achieve performance improvement. The first step of this uh, lab, it's going to be a, a training course. It's called the Professional Diploma in Healthcare Performance. It will take place in a little bit more than a month time in Dubai in the UA region and uh, um, if you would like to have more information about this three-day course that is going to be dedicated into an analysis of how to manage KPIs, how to manage healthcare performance through time and uh, you can actually be free to contact me at the email address you see below, this is my email address, as well as my colleague Mihai Toma who is going to be responsible uh, along with me with this uh, running up and running this healthcare lab. So if you have like to have any more insights, you can feel free to contact me. Thank you. If there are no questions, I think that we can uh, uh, conclude here. I wanted to thank you very much for the attention. And if you may have questions, feel free to send me an email, I will be more than happy to reply via email whenever you whenever you want. And thank you very much. Thank you very much once again for your presentation, Andrea. Well, it was... Come again? I just want to wish you a pleasant day to everyone and thank you again for your attention. Bye-bye. The KPI Institute appreciates your interest in the webinar A Balanced Scorecard System Approach in the Healthcare Sector. Follow our websites and our social media channels to find out more details about our webinars and if you are interested in getting a certification granted by the KPI Institute on vital areas within the performance management discipline, you can explore our scheduled courses on marketplace.kpiinstitute.org. Thank you once again for your participation and have a nice day.